Hey boys, welcome to Pass Games. My name is Simon. Today we're doing a negative, never <laughs> negative weight for this particular game, Cluedo or Clue if you're in the United States. This is by Waddington's. This is the particular edition I have from 1975. It is a game of skill, as it states in the rule book. It is a deduction game, a social deduction game to a degree, whereby you are playing out various different characters, looking to find a murder weapon. We're looking to find a location of the murder and we're looking to find who is that murderer. So here are the rules. Now when I showed this to my mother, I went, oh look, that's the rules. Like, oh my goodness, that's a lot. So, as you can see, it's a pretty old uh, game. You have one die, you can play more recent editions with two dice. You're gonna use up all these characters, they're all gonna be placed out. Now the dagger is missing, so I've got an elastic band instead. So, you have various locations, various weapons. For now, I'm just gonna leave these weapons in the center. But you have various people, so Colonel Mustard, one of his famous characters in board games. Over here, we can go around left to right. So over here we have Mrs. White, Mrs. White being white, funny enough, which is quite fun. We've also got Reverend Green over here. Over here we have Mrs. Peacock, so Peacock Blue over here. Professor Plum, it does look like it's black, but it's actually purple. And then Red, Miss Scarlet. Now Miss Scarlet always starts, so you can say, you know, which colour do you want to represent? You're just representing a colour, a pawn, and that is all. And as you can see, it doesn't fully fit in. I was going to zoom out a little bit, but it doesn't matter too much, as you'll see. Now, various other weapons, we have a candlestick holder, we've got uh, the lead pipe, which is pretty cool, we've got this piece of rope, we have got a spanner, and like I said, the dagger, which is missing, so we're using this elastic band. So, we'll move those out of the way for the time being, and then everyone is going to get a little sheet telling you who it could possibly be in terms of the murderer, the probable implements, and the suspected scene of the murder. Now, throughout the game, you are going to be discovering stuff. I'll show you how it works in a second. And when you think you've figured it out, so you're going to write down who you think it is. And eventually, you are then going to say, right, I think it's this person. It's do or die. And I'll show you how that works in a second. You're going to reveal it and say at the end whether or not you're right or not. If you find out you are correct, only you look at it and you'll decide. And then you may be the winner. So what happens? You have 18 cards. And there is a spare card here. Actually, with other games, I never see it ever get used. So all these 18 cards you're going to uh, make sure that you have got uh, these separated into three stacks. So obviously the murderer stack, the weapon stack, and the rune stack. Shuffle the individual stacks, and then you're gonna randomly obviously take one of each without looking at them and placing them in this little murder card envelope. So later on you'll be checking and secretly checking that. So that's gonna go hidden in there. It tucks in quite nicely, but over time this has been a bit warped. That would go into there. So all of those would go into that. Then it goes out of, out of sight. All the rest will get shuffled up and then ultimately you're going to have, well, in a three-player game, you're going to have six cards each. So having six cards each, you're then going to go through and try and deduce what you have remaining. So imagine my cards, three, four, five, six, you can then cross off the respective things. So I know it's not a lead pipe, because we know that is not in here. So we also know it's not the library, we know it's not the spanner, we know it's not the kitchen, we know it's not the billiard room, and then from that, it does say make sure they're very well shuffled, I have no idea about the murderer right now, for example. Whereas other people, they might have six cards and they might have the ballroom, they might have Reverend Green and Miss Scarlet. They might know some things about, obviously, who it wouldn't be from a murderer perspective. And then whoever's going to play red is going to go first. They're going to roll a die and move the position based on this. This is a roll and move element. So one, two, three, four, five. Once it gets to their next turn, so it's gone around again and again, and they might have moved there, they move, might move over to here. And then they're in the lounge. Now they're in the lounge, they can say, right, I am going to accuse somebody. So what they can do is they can say, I'm going to accuse, let's say, Reverend Green. So Reverend Green is going to come over here. They're going to say, I think it's the lead pipe. And they're going to say, it's the lounge. So what you're doing is you're asking the person to your left, so whoever's playing Colonel Mustard in this case, they're going to have their six cards. And of the six cards, they're going to say, do you have, you know, uh, one, of these one of these cards relating to the lead pipe, the lounge, or in this instance, Reverend Green. Now it could be they'd be accusing Colonel Mustard, so Colonel Mustard would be in here. They're going to go through it, one, two, three, four, five, six, no. Uh, they do have the lounge, they talk about the lounge, they say, yes, I have got a card, at least one of those cards relating to that. So of those six cards, they're then going to show them secretly the lounge card. Now you don't know whether or not they're showing them the lounge card, the lead pipe card, or Reverend Green card. Now the next player, in this case Mrs. White, has no idea what has been shown, but they know one of those three things is something that Colonel Mustard has in their hand. Now the way it's going to work is if you don't have anything, then this person's going to ask Mrs. White. And in a three-player game, you now know that if none of those three things are there, then this person's got to have it, otherwise those three things obviously are the final items which represent the murder. So, 
that is how the game progresses. You're going to keep playing around until eventually you are writing down again, coming up with ideas. So you think it's uh, it's white, you think it's spanner, and you think it's in the lounge. You're going to check it, and yes, rightly or wrongly, you're going to see and say, okay, yep, yeah, I've cracked it. Or if not, no, I didn't solve it. You are no longer playing in the game other than providing cards to everybody else. And in terms of the duration of play, it does stay about 45 minutes, and I think that is spot on. What do I think of the game? Well, this, like I say, is a very old edition, older than myself. Uh, I do I quite like the, obviously, the original pawns. I think they're effective. Obviously, fill up a square completely. Obviously, the fact is you can come into these rooms in multiple ways. You have secret passages. So you can jump into here and appear over here. See, the corners work quite well, and that's very handy for helping to deduce stuff. Uh, you may have seen my dice distancing video, so make sure you check out that to see how far dice roll and whether or not you need a dice tray. You can find playlists for dice videos relating to dice distancing under the playlist called Dice Distancing. This is in the How to Set Up Play and Review playlist. There's also many other videos in that too, over 1,000. There's also the Mass Games playlist, and this is also in the Family Weight playlist amongst the many others. So yes, I like the idea of having these cards. These cards are very effective, and there's loads of them to go through. Um, I think the idea of these cards uh, obviously the fact they slot in is very nice. The fact that uh, I think the, the artwork works effectively, you're obviously going to have this secret card in the centre there that you're working towards. I think there's peril in the game as well, as everyone's building up, because you want to accuse, be like, oh, they're probably going to accuse on the next turn, and I've played many games like this. Obviously this is pretty much the original. What do I think compared to the others? I give this over a 7 out of 10. I still find this very enjoyable. And aside from the fact that you can get very poor die rolls and then have to wait unless someone pulls you into a room and sometimes realising that actually the conservatory was that or wherever it might be, the, the library might be the place uh, that it occurred at, but you've been able to trudge your way across, which does take time whilst everyone else is doing accusations and then they might pull you across as well. So there is something to be aware of in that respect. I do give it over a 7 out of 10. I think there's very little downtime, especially at a lower player count, but even at a higher player count, what you're doing is you're keeping an eye out on actually where else everything is and who's asking what questions. So it does keep you engaged, and I can definitely see why this has been such a successful game and so many different versions and such like have occurred from it. Now, the board itself looks very dungeon crawl-like. Obviously, it does fit very well. It's sort of a classic old school uh, box over here. But yes, this is, like I said, the particular one by Waddington's. Highly enjoyable, highly recommend it. Yeah, still still a classic and still very effective to this day and worth checking out. Thanks for watching. Back to the table.